Today, super special day, we are doing a collaboration with none other than Casey Neistat, and we're going to be talking about hand swap animation. It's, I, I can't believe we have such a big YouTuber on our channel, and in such a small way. It's gonna be great, he's gonna help us out, I mean, he's, he's gonna give us a hand. <laughs> give us a hand? Oh, f you, that's funny. Hey everybody, it is Mark. I am here at Extra Credit Studios, deep in the bunker of an abandoned bus factory. Now, if any of you guys have seen our new show Reboots on Octopi or here at the Extra Credit channel, you guys may have noticed that our puppets now have a lot more hand articulation. In fact, I noticed a lot of comments early on in the episodes were talking almost primarily about the hands, which for a guy who wrote and, and, and starred in the show, is hard to read. I mean, I had to read it a lot. A lot of you guys thought that perhaps we had fully articulate hand puppets, but actually what we did was hand swap animation, where basically we had about three or four different hand shapes that we would trade in and out in between shots, which gave the illusion that the hands were actually moving around. And by doing it while the character is in motion, the mind tells the viewer, oh, his hand just opened up. I saw the fingers move, even though all you saw was two positions, closed and open. If you want to do a more advanced style of hand animation, you can, of course, make a puppet that has a fully articulate, poseable hand. So, for example, you got this puppet, who's kind of our little test dummy puppet, and so he has a little articulate hand here. You see, it comes right out. And, uh, yeah, so he can be a fully functioning puppet. So if you want to do fully articulate hands, go for it. That's awesome. Me? No thanks. There's nothing I have to do with the hands that's so important. I need to frame by frame move the index finger from up to down. For reboots, we use Fison dolls, which are actually dolls that were designed for sculptors so they could hold a pose and you could take time and learn how to paint or draw the human figure. But we use them for stop motion because they have amazing articulation, uh, they're seamless, they have these great seamless bodies. So this is uh, the box that the Fison puppets come in. What's really cool is they actually come with a couple different hand shapes. You know, with this basic puppet that costs about 70 bucks, it's not a cheap thing, but you have a steel armature puppet that allows you to do hand swap animation. What I have here is our, basically our menu of hand options. We've collected uh, from Fison. There's lots of different options here. Some that come with the Fison dolls and some we've kind of tinkered with ourselves. You know, you have your two fists, gotta have those. If they're uh, really cold or angry or they just have to poop, you know? Making that fist. Just, uh. We have a, a hand that's slightly open, pretty much good for holding things. Then we have trigger hands. Gotta have trigger hands. I mean, uh, this is probably one of the the more common hands we use in our show. Even with reboots, where there's really no guns supposed to be in this show, we use a lot of trigger hands, and frankly, we work in a lot of guns because we have all these trigger hands. They don't actually make a pointing finger, which is fairly crazy because you'd be amazed at how often in life humans point. So our animator, Kevin, who's pretty clever, you know, all he had were trigger hands. He figured out that if you actually just turn the hand up and point like this, you wouldn't even notice, you'd think it's just part how the character points. We got some nice resting hands, just open hands, so if a character is just standing there, obviously, this is a fine hand for that. Some dolls just come with different hands. Uh, we have the flat palm, the left-handed flat palm. Almost every single puppet uh, from Fison comes with this, but only a left-handed. They don't make a wide open right hand. I have no idea why. Also, the, the wide open hand is Frankly, it's too open. This is like a huge hand. You think you want maybe like a nice spread out hand, but no one does that. No one, it's like this, this hand is good for one thing. Look, I made a turkey. That's what this hand is good for. We do use it sometimes, but you feel it. You feel it when that hand comes out. It's like a geisha fan flying around. Check out scene one, episode one of Reboots. You'll see some real, real flag waving. So you can actually heat these hands up and you can form them or even glue things together. So for example, our animator Kevin just took an open hand and he glued the thumb and the pinky together so that you get this nice three. So, you know, character can uh, respect. I assume that's why it's there. Like I said, we had a problem because no characters could point. So they're always doing this. 
Um, so Kevin finally got tired of that, and you can see here, these are some uh, mutilated <laughs> fingers that he basically cut the trigger finger and then chopped and glued it back on so it's kind of pointing in the right direction. Two uh, very different attempts here, I would say. Uh, one guy definitely looks like his finger was broken, shattered in a car door, uh, but he's also pointing. Like, hey, that guy just shattered my finger in a car door. And uh, this guy uh, completely lost his finger. Okay, now let's actually talk about how to do hand swap animation. We'll be using our volunteer, Casey Neistat. With Casey, we have him uh, right now, he's holding a, uh, a vlog cam because it's Casey Neistat and he's always got a camera on him, but we're gonna go ahead and take this off. And so with these bodies and these hands, it takes a little bit of force, but they just pop right off. Again, we're not talking about <clears throat> several different phases of transition. We're not going from like fist to slightly open to slightly, you know, it, we're talking about maybe one move or maybe two moves at the most. Uh, so it's going to be an abrupt action. It's not gonna be, you know, releasing a butterfly. If you are trying to animate something where you need very slow, articulate hand movement, then you're gonna wanna use a puppet that has fingers you can manipulate and, and open and shut. This type of animation is used more for blunter, more aggressive, kind of, or just kind of a fun, more exciting type of animation. It adds emphasis is really what it is. You know, you can have a character say stop uh, by simply, you know, starting the shot with them having a hand that is uh, wide open, like we have our uh, dear friend Casey here, and they can just raise their arm up and say stop. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if it's something where you really wanna emphasize, for example, like the button of it, like stop, something like that, then maybe what you wanna do is start with a closed hand, and then when you get to the end, you open it wide, and you have kind of more of an abrupt poof, stop, as opposed to stop. You don't need to move hands in every single shot. It's just gonna take more time. And if what you're really trying to say is most likely gonna be articulated with the arms or the rest of the character or the head or the mouth. Let's say you wanna have a character like we were just talking about, go from a closed fist and say, stop, stop what you're doing. A lot of people do that. That's a, that seems to be a very common thing for someone to do. Just say, stop, it's like yelling at you. And people do that to me all the time. We have our puppet, we position them uh, for the shot that we're gonna, you know, for our starting frame. Some of these hands pop off and pop on super easy and quick. Some of them are super hard to get on and super hard to get off. And that's gonna be a bit of a problem if you're in the middle of animating a shot and you're trying to pull off a hand or pop a hand on and you end up moving the puppet around, it's gonna take you forever to ease it back. So like right now, this fist is being a real problem child. Will not go on. So I'm totally having to contort this body. It's driving me crazy. So this is a problematic hand. Let's say you're gonna start with your puppet and they're gonna have a close fist. And basically all you're doing is you're gonna bring it forward and say stop. So maybe the bring it forward is gonna be three or four frames. When you switch to a new hand, you want it to kind of collaborate with the movement of your arm. You don't have the ability to literally move the hand. It's going to be this and then this. It's gonna be this, this. So you can just tell just from the way that was cut that that's a bit jarring. But you probably wouldn't tell if I went from this to this. You probably didn't see exactly where the cut was there. Because the entire arm is part of the movement. You're not just moving your hand from closed to open, you're moving your hand from here to here. So you want that movement to be at the, at the end of some momentum, at, at, you know, you want to make an impact because that's what helps the brain go, oh, that hand just moved so quickly that I didn't necessarily see the fingers go. Now I'm gonna kind of accelerate in the movement. So I started off with some like medium movements, I would say, and now I just did one big one because we want it to be like, Phew! like there's a quickness at the end, we want him to, when he hits that open hand, we want it to feel like it's the height of movement. So we have that, and then we're gonna do the last movement, and his hand fell off, but that's okay. 
because we didn't need that hand. If the hand is sticking to the arm or it's hard to put on, you really want to try not to disturb the rest of your puppet because uh, you can very quickly buckle these legs, bend these hips, contort the body, and not realize you did it, and then all of a sudden, you know, the puppet is like this. Basically, I'm with my finger here just trying to support the elbow because when I'm pushing, it's going to want to make the arm go back and just trying to keep, just basically trying to keep the puppet as secure as possible. Not using a lot of force, just trying to ease it on and then just increasing, increasing, increasing force. And then we're just gonna get the final position pushed out so he's pushed way out. You don't have to do the transition at the very end of your move. You know, you, you wanna do it when you hit an apex of momentum because that really helps make the movement believable. You're not gonna wanna open it while the arm is just going because you're, the brain doesn't understand why did the hand suddenly look like it was open when it was moving at, a, at the exact same pace. But if it's a, a quick motion where the velocity changed, your brain kind of lets things go. It's basically how everyone makes money on the street playing the card game. It's, your brain's pretty dumb when things are moving around a lot. Extra Credit Studios. Your brain's pretty dumb when things are moving around a lot. Stop what you're doing. Stop what you're doing. Stop what you're doing. Stop what you're doing. With the hands we have here, you could go from a fist to a slightly more open to a fully open hand. And that's just going to give you a little bit more articulation. The more points you can add to it, the more fluid that movement is going to look. And the more people are going to think, oh, they have fully articulate hands. I mean, the credit goes to our animator, Kevin, who does... Kevin's taking a shower right now. There's other ways you can do hand swap animation. You can make your own hands. So for example, when we did the short film Delore with Anna Akana, we made this puppet. And this puppet actually has replacement hands that we 3D printed and actually designed ourselves. And for this, we designed several different hands. And this is, the animator would get this with the puppet. So they would have access to, you know, a little open hand or a uh, you know, slightly slightly closed hand. In fact, this puppet's fairly unique because it uses another type of replacement animation where it actually has a replaceable face plate so that we can take the face off and replace a shocked face with say an angry eyes closed face. And this just slides right in there, snaps on with the magnets and then Kevin can keep animating. That's face swapping animation, but it's the same type of replacement animation. If you have the opportunity to, you know, experiment with a, with a Fison armature or you have something at home, or, you know, if you want to just make something of your own, I uh, hope this has helped out. Let me know in the comments below what kind of stuff you'd like to learn more about. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit about replacement face animation. You know, there's a lot of things that I know when I got started doing stop motion animation, I really wish people would have told me about. Did you know there's like entire computer programs that will help you do this? <laughs> Let me know in the comments, guys, if you're interested in this, if this was helpful, interesting, really awful, terrible, didn't like my attitude, feel like I need to have an adjustment, I probably shouldn't be on YouTube. These are important things for me to know. Mostly, let me know what you think about our little Casey Neistat. Yeah, yeah. Check out Reboots. You can watch it on Octopi. You can watch it here on this channel. We have some new episodes coming out starring Casey Neistat as well as some other awesome YouTubers and fun celebrity clones. It's a ridiculous, crazy show. We're working on some new MPGIS stuff and uh, we're gonna start making more things like this because I've had so much fun on YouTube doing stop motion. I would love to help others have as much fun as I'm having. You guys don't have a Kevin who really helps you do everything, but I'll loan him out, super cheap. He's clean. He can get clean.